Hi, this is Melissa. Hi, this is Jess. Hey, this is Juliet, and you're listening to White Canes Connect. PA Federationists, welcome to another episode of White Canes Connect, presented by the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania. My name is David Goldstein. I am the treasurer of the Keystone Chapter. Joining me as always is co-host and Keystone Chapter second vice president, Lisa Bryant. Lisa, what do we have on tap today? A very interesting group of athletes and guides. So we're talking to the folks from Achilles, Philadelphia. Melissa Wilcox tells her story of wanting to start a chapter. She was first a guide uh, helping an athlete with a disability and and was as inspired to, to start an organization or chapter here. Jessica Bear is a guide and has actually been with another chapter of Achilles. And Juliet Warren, some may recognize that name. Juliet has been an athlete uh, running with Achilles Philadelphia. They do great work in helping people with all sorts of disabilities. It's not just limited to the blind and visually impaired community, but they really, they literally come alongside these athletes and help them stay active. And if there is some specific goal they want to achieve, they help them train to do that. People are not sitting at home. They're out and about. They have some socialization because let's face it, they're running for maybe a few miles with someone. So they are getting some of that social interaction. They're getting some exercise and everything about it is a great thing for folks. If you just want to do something, get out and about. Yes. So without further ado, let's listen to the folks from Achilles, Philadelphia. Melissa, Jessica, and Juliet, it's great to have you on today. Thank you for having us. Great to be here. Well, welcome, Achilles team. So nice to have all of you. It's a little bit of a reunion with Juliet, Um, but we, we were so glad to have what I think is a full spectrum of representation of Achilles Philadelphia. And Melissa, uh, you are sort of the creator of Achilles. Why don't you tell us how you, because from what I understand, you first were a guide um, supporting a runner and then were inspired to go on to create um, Achilles Philly. So tell us first about your experience as a guide and why that was so inspiring to do more. Yeah, sure. Uh, Well, for me, it was about 11 years ago. Uh, My company, uh, which is Cigna, um, they had asked me to become a guide in the Walt Disney World Half Marathon for a visually impaired runner that was a member of Achilles International in New York City. And um, the reason this came about was because Cigna um, had been a sponsor of of the marathon weekend and um, they newly um, formed a partnership with Achilles and uh, they needed a Cigna employee to guide a runner in the half marathon. And I was asked to do it. And to be honest, I was terrified. I had (laughs) no idea (laughs) what that would entail. Um, I knew it was a lot of responsibility. It sounded really hard and really Mm -hmm. scary, but um, I was able to go to New York city and, practice and train with him. Um, And then we did the race together that January. And it was probably, I've I've done dozens and dozens of races in my life. And it was crossing the finish line with him in that race was one of the best feelings that I, that I ever had, you know, doing the race, not just for myself, but to help someone else cross that finish line um, Mm -hmm. was just such a cool experience and um, rewarding for me. Um, and I was able to keep in touch with that athlete. I did another race with him that summer, um, which actually uh, just this past weekend, um, they have an annual race in New York City called the Hope and Possibility Race. And um, I did that with him. And after that, he, uh, I said, I wish we could do this more, more often. And he said, you know what? Philadelphia is a a really big running city. You should consider starting a chapter in your city. I'm like, you know what? Um, I love that idea. And I looked into it and 
um, I was able to get some grant money from, from Cigna and uh, got, you know, a group of, of friends to help me out because uh, it, you know, took a lot of legwork to get everything off the ground. But we did it and we started the chapter. We decided to call ourselves Philly Achilles. Uh, we started the chapter in September 2012. So uh, it was about, uh, almost 11 years ago now. And yeah. uh, it's just grown. Our very first workout, we had three athletes and maybe 12 guides. And now, um, you know, it depends week to week, but uh, now we've got, I would say, you know, rotating, we've got about 30 athletes on our roster and, you know, hundreds of guys have come and gone along the years. Um, Mm -hmm. But, uh, but it's been, it's been great. When Cigna came Mm -hmm. to you, you were already a runner. They didn't say, gee, we really didn't like what you did on that report. Uh, you got to train this guy and run with this guy. And <laughs> yeah. so, so you were you were already a runner and they knew that. And that's why they asked. That's true. Okay. It wasn't a punishment. No, it was, <laughs> uh, yes, I was, I was already a runner and I had run that race um, with, uh, with some of my colleagues uh, for years. So they knew I was a runner and they knew uh, I, I was able, I would probably be able to keep up with his pace. So, uh, so yeah, that's why I was, I was asked. It wasn't because I wasn't doing a, a good job in my activities. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> and and yeah. Melissa, you're still with Cigna and running Achilles. So you or you're not doing running Achilles full time, right? That's just still something you do while you're at Cigna. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. It was. It's completely volunteer for everybody mm-hmm. who's involved. So so yes. Um, I've always. Um, I've always, yeah, my full-time job is at Cigna and, uh, but, uh, yeah, I, um, and we have, we have many others along the way and we have a treasurer who happens to work at Cigna also, but, uh, you know, we all in our free time, um, this is our volunteer activity. So, and you started out, you said with three runners, three athletes. So, our wow. terminology, oh, okay. the athletes are, um, so Achilles International is a group for um, people with all disabilities and it yeah. could be walkers or runners yeah. um, or mm-hmm. really any, any activity they want to do to get moving. And it's not just for visually impaired or hearing impaired, right. but any kind of disability, cognitive, physical. So, um, so yeah, so we, when we say athlete, we mean right. um, one of our athletes that has some kind of disability. And then um, our volunteers are the guides. So, um, whether they're a runner or a walker or, you know, just kind of manning the fort. <laughs> um, mm. Yeah. So that's the terminology. Thank, thank you for that, because that is something that yeah. we should have made a, a little clearer in the beginning. So thank you for that correction. So to become a chapter in Achilles International, you do you have to become a 501c3. How does that all work out? Correct. Yeah. We, well, there's a parent company. So we, we are... Um, we are a 5013C under the parent company, Achilles International. So to become a chapter, there were a lot of legal things we had to do. Um, we had to, you know, establish that nonprofit status. We had to get liability insurance, set up our, our bank account and um, and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, everybody who um, who wants to become a member of Achilles has to go through a process where they have to, you know, sign a waiver and get a background check and all that kind of stuff. So there are a lot of kind of administrative things um, involved. In addition to um, making sure, one of the big things I was told in the beginning was we wanted to make sure that we weren't stepping on any toes in the city. So I went around to any other organization um, that might, um, that might also have um, athletes with disabilities and, and, you know, just forming partnerships with them. Um, And uh, that way they knew about us and they knew if anybody was interested in running, they could send them our way. And we wanted to make sure that the date that we chose to meet didn't conflict with dates that other groups might meet. Um, Mm -hmm. So we didn't want to be stealing (laughs) stealing members from any other organization. So that was another thing we did um, just to make sure that um, in the community, people, you know, we, we kind of made friends with, with other running groups and other organizations in the community. I want to bring um, Jessica into this as a guide. So Melissa shared her first experience of sort of being inducted <laughs> into this, but you must have um, 
somehow heard about Achilles. Uh, tell us that, that story. Sure. Um, so I actually lived in New York City for 10 years, and I was never able to commit to Achilles because of my my job and the time that it met. Um, and then when I finally was able to commit, COVID happened and the oh. practices decreased. So uh, I got to volunteer a little bit in New York City, but when I knew I was moving back home to Philadelphia, um, I started kind of following the Philly Achilles group and social media and realized that it seemed like an amazing community. Um, so I remember like emailing Melissa to, to try to get in to, as, an, as a guide um, because I do feel like it is the perfect combination of mm -hmm. uh, social, athletic, volunteer, and really fills a lot of buckets for me. Um, mm -hmm. I've always been a runner, but I think running with others and, and supporting those who couldn't run um, without me or without other guides is um, a really lovely kind of uh, poetic um, uh, story kind of. So yeah. Yeah. I, when I, the first weekend I moved to Philly, I, I ran on that Saturday and. Oh, and, wow. <laughs> and, uh, run m many, most Saturdays since then. Talk about how one is trained to be a guide and paired with an athlete. I remember um, when I came on, like my my first day, of kind of asking, "What's your pace? What's your distance?" Um, so that we could be paired with people of similar minded uh, paces and, and desires for how long they wanted to go. Uh, and so the the first couple of weeks, like, and I I did do it in New York City prior to moving to Philly really joining a team, but not the, the solo guide or the person that's right next to the athlete. Um, so you get to know how to, what, what type of ver verbal cues or narration that's helpful for the athlete. Um, and then a couple, maybe a couple weeks in, um, I got a chance to just try the, the tether and make sure to kind of have a conversation with the athlete ahead of time to say like, what, what's helpful to you when we're running so that I know everyone has different needs, has a different side. They like their guide on has a different, um, you know, different needs when it comes to the type of narration or, you know, we've come up with different phrases to identify if there's uh, divots in the road or they need to, if it's an uneven ground, like all the Philly sidewalks are. Um, so yeah. it, it kind of happened organically and just over time, um, practice. And Melissa, how do you pair the right? Because I'm assuming it's not just um, the the level of the athletes, you know, their level of experience or endurance or whatever, you know, the terminology is, but also a guy that's either familiar or wants to be familiar with the particular disability, right? Don't, don't you have to consider both of those things? I'll tell you a little bit about what I've learned over the years. So we have um, many of our athletes are visually impaired, but almost every single one of them has different preferences for how um, they prefer their guides to interact with them. So just because you might have been a guide, you know, if Jess was a guide for years in New York City, she couldn't necessarily come to Philly and immediately jump right in and be in the circle of trust of, you know, every single visually impaired athlete. Um, yeah. It really is a matter of building trust. So, so yeah, the way that it typically works is um, we meet on Saturdays at 9 a.m. Everybody kind of shows up. And let's say on a particular day we have – eight or 10 athletes and we might have, you know, 20 guides. And what we do is we kind of go around in a circle and each athlete lets us know how far they plan to run or walk and, and uh, approximately what pace. So that gives us a general idea of, you know, if somebody's running 10 miles, you know, you as a, as a guide showing up for your first time might not um, have planned to run 10 miles. So, you know, you <laughs> might not want to go with that team, um, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll kind of start out matching you up with someone who is going about the, the, the mileage or pace you want. But um, oftentimes uh we, you form partnerships and friendships. Um, I mean, this is, like Jess said, such a social thing, too, um, that there are certain guides that go with the same athletes every week just because it's mm -hmm. their, you know, time every week to catch up and, and talk and chat, and they have built that level of comfort. Um, 
And other guides like to kind of jump around just so they can learn how to guide different people. Um, you know, Jess was mentioning a tether. So many of our visually impaired athletes hold it's, um, it can essentially just be a shoelace tied in a loop. Um, and a guide will hold a tether. Um, and then we have different positions. Like there might be a, a guide that if we have enough people, especially in a race situation, we might have a guide that runs in front and we call that the bulldozer. And that person kind of uses verbal clues, letting people know that, um, you know, a, a blind athlete coming through or, you know, kind of clearing the way um, so that the athlete and the guide have enough space. Um, you know, so some athletes use that tether. Other athletes, we actually have one athlete that doesn't like to use a tether. So you have to do completely verbal cues the whole time, um, which can be really challenging, but um, yeah. that's just his preference. He doesn't like to use a tether. Um, so it really, everybody has different preferences. And as a new guide, um, I think we heard some feedback early on that it can be a little intimidating. People, you know, like me, my first time, like, I have no idea how to guide somebody mm -hmm. who can't see this. Um, but we, uh, so we try to make it, um, like Jess said, the first time you come, you wouldn't be the solo guide for someone. You would be part of the team. Um, okay. You know, ideally, if we have enough volunteers come, one athlete might have three, three or even more guides running with them so that um, anybody new can kind of run in the pack and understand and kind of get trained on the job training, you know, um, from the athlete um, and from the other more experienced guides. Um, and, and, you know, I learned early on with this in the very beginning, I didn't want to offend anybody and I was a little bit afraid mm -hmm. to ask you know, how much can you see? You know, I didn't want to offend. And right. um, I learned quickly that you have to, you know, you have to be, especially when, you know, somebody is trusting you with their safety, you have to find out, okay, how mm -hmm. can you see shapes? Can you see colors? Can you see absolutely nothing at all? What would you like me to do? Do you want me to talk? Am I talking too much? Am I you mm -hmm. know, not saying enough? You know, mm -hmm. and so it's really important to establish those um, ground rules early on and, you know, just work with them. Some athletes don't really know, like it might be their first time too, and they don't really know what they need yet, but uh, you figure it out together. So I think communication is so important. Uh, when you're when you're first uh, starting out. So we do have an athlete in the house, <laughs> our own Juliet Warren. Juliet, so nice to talk to you again. How did you find out about Achilles Philly? And and tell me, so have you always been athletic? Like, is that just something kind of in your blood and you just wanted to continue the journey? I was never a runner. Um, my dad was a runner. Um, I was kind of that person that saw people jogging or running. And I wondered why they were running when nobody was chasing them. I was kind of that. Um, or no, there's but, no bus coming. <laughs> yeah. Why, why, why are we running? That's That was kind of my attitude towards running initially. But um, as far as um, athletics, yeah, athletics have been a have been a part of my life uh, forever. Um, before mm -hmm. I lost my sight, uh, I played basketball um, from the age of six. Uh, okay. I played uh, middle school, high school. I got a Division One scholarship to University of Delaware, and uh, mm -hmm. I played uh, professionally overseas for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So um, after I lost my sight, um, I honestly didn't think that being an athlete was a thing that I could do anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And it took took a lot of time before I got to that point, and. Um, I moved to Drexel Hill and I, I wanted to be active again. I, I wanted to, um, I, I honestly, I just wanted to get outdoors and I wanted to walk. That's kind of where mm -hmm. it started. Um, and I joined a, a community face, a Facebook group in my area. And I just kind of put a post out there and said, uh, would anybody like to walk slash maybe walk run with me? Um, mm -hmm. And you know that I'm, I'm blind. Uh, and when I did that, um, a lady from the group actually, uh, hooked me up with a lady by the name of Amy Gillespie, who is um, a part of Achilles as a guide. And mm -hmm. she didn't live too far from me. So she started driving to my house on Mondays and uh, we went over to Arlington Cemetery. And first we started walking and then uh, we gradually started to kind of, you know, do a little jog. And that's when she told me about Achilles and um, got online and uh, I think somebody gave me Melissa's email address and Melissa emailed me back and said, come on down. And uh, that's kind of how I ended up uh, starting out. 
So that was when again? When did you start with him? It it was actually actually um not this coming weekend, but the following weekend will be officially a year since I've been with Achilles. So last year, July. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. and what's it been like? What have you been able to accomplish? Like how how what's the experience been like? Honestly, it's been incredible. You know, initially uh it was terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. The idea of uh, running, uh, even in the city, with uh, mm-hmm. with somebody guiding you, it takes a lot of trust. Sure. Um, but Achilles has incredible people there. It's just, it really is an incredible group. Um, just very welcoming, uh, very yeah. supportive, um, and just very reassuring. Uh, yeah. I think my very first time, I did like a walk, um, and yeah, I was, I was, I was very, very scared. Mm -hmm. Um, but eventually, you know, again, with that reassurance, um, and that support, you just, you kind of learn to trust. Um, I initially had one guy that I, you know, I gravitated towards because I was comfortable, but like Melissa said, um, you know, I think you kind of try to change it up. I think Mm -hmm. when I go with other volunteers or excuse me, other guides, excuse me, uh, you know, it just, uh, it kind of enhances the experience, but Overall, like I've exceeded anything that I thought I could do. Um, I struggle to do the mile in high school, so I don't, I don't, I'm not really too sure how I'm doing what I'm doing right now. But um, outside of even the running part, even just the social aspect of it, uh, just this past weekend, I think Melissa mentioned the Hope and Possibilities uh, race. I was in New York City um, and we, uh, we stayed at a, an amazing hotel and Got to see everybody uh, put their hair down and yeah. uh, just, just had a really good time getting to know people and, um, you know, eventually running the race. But yeah. it's been an incredible experience for sure. So your goal initially was just to, because you you said running wasn't your thing. So the, your goal was just to, I guess, maybe conquer some fears, hesitations that, it, you know, it's not like, oh, you know, I've always wanted to do this marathon, right? Your your goals were pretty basic, right? That's, that's what it sounds like. I just wanted to Finish be active me. again. I just mm-hmm. wanted to get back in shape and I just wanted yeah. to be active again. And so, yeah, I didn't have any, any goal of like, I wanted to complete a 5k or a hat, right. nothing like that. it's just, uh, yeah, it was just an opportunity to, you know, uh, stay active and, uh, stay in shape for sure. And when you're running, you are running without a cane. And that's the reason that you need that level of trust with the guide, because you're out there just taking anything that they, any information they give you and using that because you're not having that, which you normally have that, uh, that tactile, Oh, here's a hole in the road or here's a branch or here's a, whatever you're totally relying on the guide for all feedback. Yeah. So I normally have a, uh, like Melissa said, a, a shoestring type deal. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, you, you really are depending on uh, the guides and, and trusting them completely. When I first started, I think I was uh, nervous about speaking up and saying what I needed because I didn't want to seem pushy. But as it went on, I understood that for it to work, that's what I needed to do. Um, And each guide has different, I think, methods of how they do things. So having different ones also kind of helps you determine what you want them to tell you. So like you said, David, I don't have my cane. So normally if I did you know, I could, I could feel a curb cut or I know there's a down ramp or up ramp. So that's what they, that's what they tell me. So if we're coming up to um, an intersection, they'll say down ramp. And as we're running across the street, they'll say up ramp. Um, and then sometimes we have to go downstairs and, you know, they'll help me down there. Or if we're running, there could be a bike behind us and they'll say, you know, bike on the left, bike on the right. Or if we're passing somebody, we normally say, or they'll say, tell the person what side we're passing on. So there's a lot of communication for sure to make you feel uh, to make you feel very safe. And it's also awesome when you have like four people running around you because you feel like you have like like an armored vehicle protecting you. <laughs> Pretty cool. It sounds like the training to understand the athlete is more on the job, so to speak, as opposed to um the sensitivity training that you might have had to go through or 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 am i wrong like was there some other formal um training to help you to know how to communicate and especially since you are serving a variety of um people with disabilities yeah so actually when we first started out before we met 
officially for the first time. We had some training. Um, those of us that were, were starting up the chapter, we had some training from some different people at headquarters. So um, it was actually pretty cool. We, we did a trust exercise where all of us sighted guides um, met up and one of us had to put on a blindfold and have, have our partner guide us. And I'll tell you what, we were on a path where I knew there was no traffic and I knew, you know, it was just straight, no turns, no bumps, nothing. And I was so tentative when I had the blindfold on, I realized how scary that was. I was taking tiny little steps because it was so (laughs) scary to just like full out run without being able to know what's in front of me. Um, And that was a really um, no pun intended eye opening experience for me as a as a future guide because I realized wow this the athlete that I'm going to be guiding if they're a visually impaired athlete is really going to have to put complete trust in me um, so that really helped being on the other side of it um, now <clears throat> so that's um, something that we did and you know what we learned there I think over time those of us who went through that training have been able to pass on some of our experience to to the new guides that that come and um, we always have every week there are enough experienced guides that that like you said if we have somebody new we uh, would never send them out on their own with somebody uh mm-hmm the first time but we would have an experienced guide explain what that particular athlete might need um over the years we've had some people with cognitive disabilities um you know for example maybe a teenager who had autism and they would come with a parent and the parent before you know we were able to go out with their child gave us a full rundown of their needs and what they what they you know might need help with and so we do our best to to understand the individual um, before we we go out and um, and run with them. But um, a lot of it really is kind of needs to be learned on the fly. Like Juliet said, sometimes the athlete might come to us and they might be a new runner and not know exactly what they want. And by running with different guides and understand, you know, by kind of experiencing different ways that that guides have learned over the years to to run with somebody, um, you might learn what you like and what you don't like. So it is a very organic kind of experience and um, we kind of, it's evolved um, over the years, but I think most, most of us kind of just learn as we go. And would you say that's been primarily your experience, Jess? Yes, definitely on the go training, uh, no pun intended. And it's, (laughs) You know, being with uh, an experienced guide or your first week, learning some of the lingo, and then again, just having that communication and open communication with your athlete about what they need um, and what their preferences are, I think is important. Um, But nothing can replace just actually going on a run with the team and and listening to other people guide and and seeing how that relationship is. I'm curious to know, do you guys ever start off with new runners or training new folks on a track where it may be a material that you kind of have a feeling, okay, there's not going to be any barriers. There shouldn't be any holes because this is a track where a lot of folks run, whether it's high school or college or whatever. Do you ever start out like that with people? Uh, we really have not because where we meet, it's in um, right at 16th and Chestnut. It's kind of right in the middle of the city. Of the city. So we really don't have the ability to get to a, tr- you know, we don't have a track right there. What we typically do, um, most of us, no matter what mileage people are doing, we tend to at least start out the same route. Um, so it's a Saturday. There's not a lot, of, there's not a ton of traffic in the city. Um, so mm-hmm. what we do is we run up Market Street up to, I think it's about uh, like 23rd Street. There's a ramp. So we run from 16th to 23rd Street ish um, on the sidewalk. So there's a little bit of traffic. We might have to stop at stop plates, but then we go down the ramp at, to the Schuylkill Trail, and there, um, there's no. It's it's a trail, so there are no cars or traffic. So we we do have um, the ability to run traffic free on a on a straight path um, once we get. You know, it's probably three quarters of a mile or so that we have to run through the city streets. But then we're kind of um, out. Uh, we go out on Kelly Drive and, um, you know, that loop around there is about eight and a half miles. So um, 
people can can run you know pretty you know they can determine their distance but running along that loop there's no traffic so that's helpful we okay. don't have to and worry i guess about. along i guess along market there too the sidewalk is a little wider for a good chunk of it i would imagine i know through at least some of it is that does that also make it helpful Correct. i guess okay that is yeah exactly yeah so earlier melissa you were talking about those uh very humble beginnings where you had three um athletes that, you know, when you first started this chapter, what are you up to now? And what is the need now? Um, Do you need more guides? Do you need more athletes? Uh, So what are your numbers now, first off? So it really varies week to week. We don't require people to come um, a certain number of times. So I would say our active roster of athletes, um, we probably have I would say maybe up to 25 athletes, but there's never, there's never a given week where it's that many that come. We we've had some weeks where we've had 10 to 12 athletes come, um, which is that I would consider that a really good turnout on average. You might have like, I don't know, eight, eight to 10 in a given week. Um, You know, sometimes when it's bad weather, we don't have a lot, or if there's a race, like, you know, last weekend when we had that hope and possibility race in New York, most of our chapter went to that. So we only had, I think, two athletes that didn't do the race that showed up. So um, it it can vary week to week, but I would say we have maybe 25 um, athletes that come occasionally, at least. We have some that come every single week. Um, We have, I would say, it's so hard that we have our guide population can be a bit transient. We have a lot of medical students, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. that come and volunteer Mm -hmm. while they're in the city for medical school, but then they often move on. Um, But uh, I would say we've got um, currently maybe 50 or 60 volunteers. Again, they don't all come every week. Um, I would say, you know, on a, on a good week, we might have 15 ish, 15 Mm -hmm. to possibly 20 volunteers. So I would say you asked our needs. Um, we had a week um, just, uh, I think it was just maybe three weeks ago that we literally only had one guide per athlete and we were lucky. I was sweating. I was like, please volunteers come through the door before we have yeah. to go. Um, and we had just, we just had enough because, um, and, and you know, it, it also, you, you want to make sure that you have m- more than enough guides because you know like Mm -hmm. Juliet said the more guides you have it can be kind of like that insulation um and it's nice as an athlete sometimes to have like three or four guides with you but also um you want to make sure you have enough guides to do the mileage and pace with the athletes once we would never want the we would never want the situation to happen where an athlete shows up and wants to run it six miles but we don't Mm -hmm. have any guides that can run that far so they have to you know cut back on what they wanted to do um so i would say we could really use more guides even though we we always figure out a way um to make it work um we could always use more guides and um you know, that's why lately we've been trying to promote, tell people, you know, you don't have to be a marathon runner. You don't have to be mm-hmm. super speedy. You can be, you, if you are super speedy and you want to run far, we have athletes that will do that with you. Um, mm-hmm. but you don't have to be. And, um, but again, we're looking for athletes all the time too. We love, um, having, uh, new, new athletes and, um, getting a chance to, to, you know, give them new experiences. So we're looking for both, but especially, um, if I could put a plug out there right now, it would be yeah, to, please, to try some, some, new, some new guides. Um, we can always use new guides. And you guys run rain or shine on Saturdays? Yeah. Yeah. We typically, mm-hmm. where we meet, um, is we meet at the Cigna building and, um, almost every week, as long as we have, um, someone to open up the gym for us so we have there are four of us that have access to the gym it's it's um completely for us only on saturdays so it's not open to the public um and we get to meet in the gym so there have been days um we have some really hardcore athletes who will go out no matter what the weather um but there have been some days that the weather is whether it's rainy or, or icy out there we have access to the gym so we still have the workout and you can opt to stay in and, and maybe run on the treadmill or walk on the treadmill or, or do, mm-hmm. you know, weights or do something different. So, so yeah, um, we very rarely cancel. There have been some times that it's been, um, you know, 
inclement weather where we don't want anybody traveling to, to get there. So we've canceled, but, um, but for the most part, we have, we have the workout every week, no matter rain or shine. So when someone decides to stay in and maybe just run on the treadmill, um, how are they, or, or are they, do they need a guide at that point? No. And, and yeah. we've had some, you know, like I mentioned, we never want an athlete to have to cut back on their goal because we don't have a guide for them. We have had a couple situations where an athlete wanted their training for a race and they needed to do a certain mileage and we didn't have enough guides or a fast enough guide. Um, so they might do some of their workout on the treadmill instead. We've had that happen a couple of times where, because yeah, you're, you're right. Um, oftentimes, um, one of us might help set them up on the treadmill, make sure everything's, um, you know, they're good. So, but yeah, they wouldn't need a guide at that point. So if they want to do a super hard workout, um, and, uh, you know, they do have that option. Mm -hmm. So, um, Juliet, going back to where you are now versus a year ago, um, any goals now? I mean, uh, now that you've gotten a lot more training under your belt, um, do you have your sights on any marathons in the next oh, year or no, so? No, 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 <laughs> no. Take marathon. No, no. Okay. Um, I think the next race that I signed up for is uh, Mayor's Cup, and that's five miles. So, like, I, okay. I think eventually, you know, maybe I'll get there. I think when I first started, because I'm super competitive, I was like. I'm going to get to this. And I, I think I've kind of scaled back. I just, I just enjoy um, the run, but now nah, there's yeah. no, I don't have any slights on any, any 13 or 26 milers at this point. Not, not, not in the least. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's fine. Um, Jess, you've been doing this for a while. Tell us about some of your most rewarding experiences. I, you know what, that's probably a whole nother hour long podcast, but maybe just boil it down to one or two examples that you could share. Because this might be good for anyone listening um, on either end and, and, you know, listening to Juliet and how far she's come. But maybe there's somebody out there that has a potential to be a guide. You know, maybe some of your experiences might be uh, what the, the motivation they might need. Well, it truly is a, like a symbiotic relationship because they need me to go for the run. And I often need them to get pushed harder or longer than I thought I would. Um and I've definitely developed relationships with athletes pretty quickly. Um, and it's a true partnership and, and there's trust and, and we push each other. Um, to the, and because, you know, you're sharing these like sacred miles out on the trail on a Saturday morning, like a lot of a lot of the athletes who I run with frequently, um, you know, they like know my deepest, darkest secrets. Like we we talk mm -hmm. about <laughs> we just we talk and, and it's. Mm -hmm it's a social opportunity and it gives us a lot of joy and energy. And, you know, I want to run with someone to catch up with them, um, hear about their life and vice versa. Um, and then I've developed relationships where we'll run outside of the Saturday practice. Um, mm. One of our athletes, um, Mike, he has gotten on a 6 a.m. bus, the earliest bus possible to make it into center city so that we could go on a long run before the workday. Um, and you know, he, so I think there's, there's other times I've, I've run with, uh, athletes out near their house or their house or a trail near them. Um, and so developing the relationship outside of the Saturday practices is great too. Mm -hmm. uh, I think also one, one recent, um, development has been, I've tried to join um, Mural Miles, which is another running group with Achilles, um, because they're, as you know, Philadelphia is such a wonderful art and mural city. And mm -hmm. there's over 4,000 murals that a lot of our athletes can't enjoy or, or right. can't see. And so there's um, an opportunity to, to run with this group that it ultimately runs to see different murals. And there's an explanation about the mural at each one. Um, and I, this, this year we've done a few Saturday morning mural miles, Achilles runs where guides mm -hmm. will volunteer to guide athletes on those runs. Um, and Melissa and I, and the founder of mural miles, Craig have also been working on 
uh, creating a visually impaired friendly mural that will be tactile um, and something that all people with all levels of sight can enjoy. Juliet, do you do any other kind of sports outside of this running? Do you, have you done anything else or has the running been enough to keep you going? I start uh, golf study from uh, Achilles. Uh, She, uh, she mentioned it to me. Um, I'd heard about blind golfing before. um, And uh, yeah, so I start that. And then I did uh, start with the um, uh, cycling program as well. But the downfall with that is that it's at the same time as Achilles on Saturday. So if I have to choose, unfortunately, it's going to be Achilles all day. Is the golf then, with uh, Mid Atlantic Blind Golf? Yep, Mid Atlantic Blind Golf. And okay. um, the podcast that you guys did with Philly Fire, I actually yeah. joined up with them um, a couple weeks ago. Oh, cool. um, and uh, I'm after listening have a to our podcast, after literally after listening to your podcast, Yay. I took, I took <laughs> John's number down and I texted him and I was on the oh, field the next Saturday. That. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> We're reaching someone. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, we, really should, cool. uh, we should do a tandem cycling together because that's been one of my, one of my dreams. That would you know, be awesome. I was going to ask, awesome. have you got, well, have, have you been paired, Jessica and Juliet? Have you run together? Yeah, yeah, we, okay. ran, we mm-hmm. ran together okay. uh, once before. Um, how do you feel about tandem kayaking, Jess? Mm. Sure, count me in. Right. <laughs> hey, I actually I, sought Juliet out because I I heard that she was a big basketball fan, and and I am as well. <laughs> and so I wanted to talk about the Sixers with her. Uh-huh. Uh, so I think we'll we'll be able to run and and chat ba- basketball from now on. Yeah, for sure. Well, I will cheer you all on. <laughs> um, how about that? You know, I, I really, I mean, I do love to spin. Um, my athletic ability is, is, um, I'm athletic in a stationary kind of way. So, um, <laughs> I'll cheer, I'll cheer you on and support you however else I can. Before we wrap up, I wanted to make sure people knew how to contact you and, um, maybe talk a little bit about, how easy it is to get involved, whether or not you are an athlete or a guide um, and, and, you know, and just what your need is and just make the pitch. Well, it is super easy to get involved. Um, The quickest way you can email me directly. My email is Melissa at phillyachilles.com. So um, if you email me directly, I will get you all the information you need. Um, There is, as I mentioned, um, a membership form that needs to be filled out. There's a waiver um, and that'll get you, you know, your background check and get you officially in our Achilles membership database. Um, Mm -hmm. So email me and I will um, provide all that information to you. Um, but other than that, you can just show up. It's, we meet every Saturday at 9 a.m., 1601 Chestnut Street. Uh, just go to the lobby of the Cigna building and we will either be meeting there in the lobby or up on the fourth floor in the gym. Security will send you up. And um, yeah, it's it's free. Um, you mm-hmm. do not have to have any experience. You can just be completely new to running you don't have to have any kind of you know fitness level in advance um but i think uh you know i think both julia and jess can attest that uh we we do our best to make everybody feel super welcome their first time and it's a it's an amazing group of people um that are very warm and welcoming and we are always looking for for new members to join us is there an age minimum or maximum or any geographical requirements or limitations yeah so anybody under 16 does need a parent or guardian to accompany them so mm-hmm. um that is that is a requirement um and in terms of geographical location um we are the only chapter in the general um, Philadelphia tri you know, tri-state area. There aren't different chapters in different, you know, Delaware County, Montgomery County, Bucks County, New Jersey, um, South Jersey. There is a North Jersey chapter, which is probably the closest to to us. So we are the central location, the, the chapter that anyone in this general vicinity would would want to come to. Um, okay. Where we meet is accessible. Um, it's it's 
convenient to both um, Patco. Um, if you're coming from New Jersey, it's just a, a three block walk um, mm-hmm. from the Patco stop. And then from, you know, SEPTA station, um, it, we're only a block or two from there. So it is um, a, a somewhat convenient location for public transportation, as well as on the weekends, there's often parking on the street their parking lots around. So it's pretty easy to get to, I think, for, for most people, even if you're coming from from a little bit further away, it is accessible via public transportation. And again, we should also stress it's not limited to people with visual impairments. You can serve um, a variety of, of disabilities. Yes, any kind of disability, even if it's a short-term dis- disability. You know, one of our first when I mentioned we had three athletes that came to our very first workout, one of them was someone who had recently gotten into a car accident. So she had kind of a, a shorter term disability. Um, so, yeah, no matter wh- whether it's cognitive, physical, permanent, um, short term, um, we welcome anybody. And, you know, a lot of us guides, um, we get injured along the way and we kind of mm. become athletes in a way for a while <laughs> as we're recovering from our injuries. So, yes, we welcome anybody um, of, of any fitness level and any any kind of ability. Jessica, as a longtime veteran guide, um, what would you say to anyone out there kind of thinking like, you know, I, I'm interested, but I've never done this before. Come by and check it out. That's, that's yeah. really the best way to get your foot in the door. Um, like Melissa said, you'll be greeted and welcomed warmly and, um, you know, sent out on a run or a walk with a team that will support you. So, um, you know, it can't hurt to try. And Mm -hmm. my guess is that once people try, they'll, they'll enjoy it and get hooked and keep coming back. And Juliet, our athlete, but one who this was still new territory for you running. Um, What would be your call to anyone out there on the fence Get off the fence. <laughs> just come do it. Like I come on I, in. The I, water's I, fine, huh? You know what I'm yeah, just let just just uh get in it. I understand it's uh it's terrifying at first, but yeah. um again, it's it's a really great group and uh, they're very supportive and very reassuring. And you know, just the connections that you made and the things that I've you know branched out to from this. Um, yeah. things I didn't know about were uh. It's just, it's been a great experience. So I, I say get off the fence and just uh, come have some fun. Let's do it. Um, any other social media where folks can follow along or maybe learn a little more? Right now, our main um, way to communicate, we have a Facebook group. And that group is called Philly Achilles Family. That is our main channel to communicate Um we every week we post um, workouts where you can RSVP if you're coming. Um, we post our pictures there from the workouts and talk about any race coordination, um, you know, upcoming races, things like that. One last thing you said: there's no real um, mandatory uh, commitment. In other words, to be a guide or to be an athlete, you have to come at least four straight Saturdays. There's nothing like that that people have to kind of commit to, or is there? Yeah, no, that's a good question because I get that a lot. Some people might say I have to work every other Saturday. Is that okay? Yes, that's totally okay. Um, One thing we should point out is that um, you do earn a Philly Achilles shirt if you come three times. So on your third time, you earn your shirt. Um, so that's oh. always exciting. Um, but yes, um, no, you're, you're under no obligation to come, um, to come, you know, a certain number of times, just as often mm-hmm. as you can, or, you know, whenever your schedule allows, we're, we're open to, to anything that we can get. Well, it sounds like you make it super easy. Um, so really the only barrier that anyone probably has is (laughs) themselves. So thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Jessica, Juliet. So nice to talk to you again and continue this great work. Please keep us posted of any other milestones, or if, you know, if you want to come back on again and pitch another upcoming race or something like that, feel free, but it was a great talking to all of you. My pleasure. Glad to that we finally made it. Yeah, this was great. Thanks, guys. Thank 
Thanks again to Melissa, Jessica, and Juliet for coming on and giving us the information, what it's like to start the chapter for Philly Achilles, as well as be a guide. And of course, as Juliet told us, how she became an athlete and started running with a guide. I think it's a great story for Juliet, who, although she was already athletic, this was still a new category for her. So there was still a learning curve, but now she's gotten to a level of trust. And as you mentioned earlier, the social component, Jessica also stressed the social component. component. It's a great experience. And I hope there's some folks out there, just as Juliet was inspired to uh, join the Philly Fire, I hope there's some of you out there that listen to this episode and maybe you'll want to be either a guide or an athlete. Yeah, that would be incredible. And please let us know if you're going to jump in and either become an athlete with Philly Achilles or you're going to be a guide, whatever you're going to do, or if you're going to do something else to be active with the Philly Fire or some other sporting type event that you get involved in, please reach out. You can call us at 267-338-4495. Please leave your name and your town if you do leave a voicemail. We'd love to know sports you're involved in or if you've got questions about the podcast or show ideas, anything you've got, 267-338-4495. You've got up to three minutes. Give us a call. And we welcome your emails. Our email address is whitecanesconnect at gmail.com. Lisa, it was a great episode. I feel like I got a little workout in. I actually (laughs) did walk back and forth while I was listening to them talking about running. Well, I vicariously (laughs) worked out with them. (laughs) But thank you all. I'm interested to see how many steps. Yeah. Thank you all for listening. Thanks, everyone. Take care.